Hi, everyone. Christian and I welcome you back to another episode of Mondays with Mindy. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> Today, our episode is sponsored by uh, the cocktail party, Love Mary. Absolutely. We're so grateful for you, Mary Giuliani. Shout out. <laughs> uh, today's episode features a conversation with someone I first met um, only about 35 years ago. Hmm. Just, a, just a short window ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actress, producer, and talk show host, Ricky Lake. Uh, Ricky made her film debut as Tracy Turnblad in John Waters' 1988 cult classic, Hairspray. Oh, she favorite. also starred, yes, in Waters' other films, Cry Baby, Cecil B. Demented, and Serial Mom. <laughs> Uh, she also co-starred in the films Mrs. Winterborn, Cabin Boy, and Last Exit to Brooklyn. Ricky joined the cast of the Vietnam War drama series China Beach and had a recurring role on The King of Queens as her first forays into television. Not bad. Yeah. In 1993, Ricky debuted as the youngest person at the time to ever host a daily talk show, and hers aired through 2004. Uh, after her talk show wrapped, Ricky started hosting and acting once again and also became an author. In 2009, she, along with dear friend Abby Epstein and Jacques Moritz, wrote Your Best Birth about the world of natural childbirth and birthing options, which was something that Ricky was experiencing in her real life at the time. <laughs> she and Epstein also launched an online social network to allow professionals and parents to dialogue with each other about these options. And while continuing to host a kind of updated version of her talk show and making various cameo appearances, having a stint on Dancing with the Stars, in 2018, Ricky and Abby premiered their documentary, Weed the People, at South by Southwest. The film examines the use of cannabis as medicine. It was actually one of the first things to come out uh, talking about this uh, and also its status as a Schedule One prohibited drug. Last year, Ricky was revealed to be the Raven in the Fox series, The Masked Singer, yeah. and later began competing in the X Factor Celebrity in London. Ricky, mother of two sons, lives in Malibu with her amazing rescue dog, Mama Buddha Lake. <laughs> I love that. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are excited to welcome to the show the multi-talented Ricky Lake. Yay! Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ricky. Oh Great my gosh, it's evil. so good to, to see your you. face. I can't even tell you. Um, so we start off each episode. Uh, Christian and I have come up with um, just random questions in my fabulous Johnny Adler canister. Um, and I randomly pull five and we just go a deep okay. dive. All get right. Little, get to know you, a little fire round. Don't okay. people know me already? I get the feeling pe people already know me. But guess yeah. what? I don't. Th I don't do. think you've been asked these questions. Maybe you have. Maybe okay, you have. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Ricky, who's your favorite relative and why? Oh well, it could be deceased, right? My grandma Sylvia yeah. would be yeah. my favorite, favorite, favorite relative, and she's the reason I'm an actress. She, you know, she died when I was nine years old. Her name was Sylvia. And she was my father's mother. And she told me that I was the best at everything. She just instilled in me that I could do anything I wanted to do. And I saw Annie. She took me to see Annie on Broadway. She took me to all the different theater and ballet and stuff in New York. And it made me want to be a performer. So, yeah, wow. I do feel her watching over me to this oh day. Oh, my God. Thank you, Grandma Sel. We day. love her. We Yay. have Ricky. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>, um, <laughs> is there another creative that you admire right this minute and why oh my god well it doesn't have to be right this minute who comes to mind yeah i mean right okay well you know i was talking about derek huff just the other day mm. i was showing and he you know i did dancing with the stars with him like nine nine years ago and he i remember working with him and they, saying he's one of the most talented people i've ever ever come across ever and you know john waters is amazing and all these amazing you know people I've i mean you've to work worked with, with some years. incredible people so what made you say that he's a genius he's a freaking genius and I, obviously the world now knows but back then this was 2011 and you know to see him work because when they do that show i also have an appreciation for that show the work that goes into it the production value and so you know they give you a, a, the music and they give you the style of dance and he came up with like a not only the choreography but like a a theme and, a, and an art oh, wow i mean it was it was really 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 impressive and he taught me to ballroom dance oh. so um i'm i, I he, he's he's who comes to mind hmm. okay oh, I, like I like that, that. I like that. Oh, uh, sorry to be judging. Like, I like it. I don't like it. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, Good answer. <laughs> um, what's your favorite place in the world and why? 
Okay, I have two. I have two. You're allowed. Ibiza. Ibiza, Ibiza is my favorite mm. place to go. Like Burning Man and Ibiza are two of my favorite places. Um, oh. Burning Man is like nothing you that exists in, in life for me. Like I, I've been, I, I discovered it in 2017 after my husband mm-hmm. passed and I've been ever since. So I would have gone this year, but of course it was canceled because of right. our current situation. But it is the most magical um, just, just the concept, the principles of Burning Man, the the way people drop in, no one's connected really to their phone or to, you know, mm-hmm. they're really present. It's, it's a magical place. And Ibiza also is an island off of Spain that I've been going to since my husband, Christian, um, yes. took me there in 2000, 2011. And oh, I've so you like, went for the first time with him? With him. He introduced okay. me to that island. And um, it's, it's, it's a very special place. Yes, there's the whole party aspect of it but there's also a very like deep rooted cultural just 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 a mindset of being present and appreciating mm-hmm. what's in front of you it's a very very special place that attracts a lot of really interesting people so i i love i love that island i got engaged there i went on my honeymoon there i brought so oh. many friends to discover this magical place and i can't wait to bring my my new boyfriend there once uh, things get back to normal yes yeah. and your old yeah. dear friend mindy yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, what scares you? Oh my gosh. Um, what scares me? My my dog being ill right now. She's she's unwell, and so that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not gonna lie. I took an edible a little earlier, and so it it tends to make me a, a little bit more paranoid maybe or tend to go that way and so I mm-hmm. was in a state of panic and anxiety about an hour ago about my dog but um Mama. outside of that I don't have I don't have a fear of dying like I once did I mean obviously I'm not looking forward to it but I've done ayahuasca many 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 times and I think yeah. that has really helped in uh letting go of that fear you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I see that. um how do you unwind or unplug I think you may have just shared that with me well, and I mean, Christian, during COVID, right? during COVID <laughs> yeah. I uh, tend to have a couple of gin and tonics at night. I, you know, I mean, drinking has definitely been a way to unwind. I, what else do I do? I mean, I go on walks with my dog. I mean, I live at the beach. Um, yeah. And so, I, yeah, I like getting outside in nature, um, you know, but, but this obviously this time has been such a time of like solitude and isolation and quiet. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, having a, a drink at the end of the day has definitely been helpful in turning de- it down a notch. Yeah. So what have you been binging on or have you been binging on anything? Binging as in food or binging as in watching? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so well, definitely, honestly, definitely. when you're talking to me, it's usually both. So yeah, exactly. whatever you want to however you want to answer, kiddo. <laughs> what have I been binging on? I mean, I'm just watching The Queen's Gambit. So I'm just oh. in oh. that. Have you watched it? So good. Really good. Really Superb. good. Um, I mean, I'm addicted to Rachel Maddow. I'm so obsessed with Are her. Are you? Oh my gosh, she's so amazing. She's so brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I really, I've been watching her, I, you know, and I was, I, was, I was caught up in the anxiety of this election and the anxiety of COVID and the state. Yes. I mean, Black Lives Matter. I mean, the whole thing has like yeah. really been a very challenging time for all of us. And you, um, and you were finishing your house and moving during this time as well, which and is and no- I'm still not in my house. I'm still not in it. So oh, I'm okay. at my boyfriend's house, which isn't too shabby. It's at the beach as well. But yeah. um, my house is not ready. And I'm at the mercy of the gas company in Malibu. Oh, I'm, you know, I, I don't have the certificate of occupancy. So my stuff is all there. Right. I'm living out oh, of the suitcase. Honey. So maybe, look, yeah. I'll just show you like, yeah, that's my stuff, you know, like in a corner. Oh my it's gosh. A, it's it's a I'm Quarto de Ricky. A little yeah. room with a view. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god! I a little. Oh view, my god! Look. Yeah. Yes. You'll see the Pacific. Oh. Yeah. Gorgeous. Not bad, kiddo, but it's not. not it's no not what you've been working towards for the last year. So yeah. I know that. I was that. really ready. I was ready to move in, and I am ready, and it's going to be amazing. And it's this new chapter. You know, so much of this house. I bought this house with my husband Christian, who passed. I didn't know <laughs> that. Tell me things. You didn't know Christian passed away. Oh no, I didn't know that you bought it with him. Oh, I bought it. Yeah, we we had sold my other I sold my other house and wanted to ha- live like overlooking the water. We wanted to be uh-huh. near the water. So we bought this place and it literally has taken 7 years. I mean, it just just wow. past 7 years that I bought it. So, you know, with the Coastal wow. Commission with I, I, it was one oh, thing after lot. another. It's been really it's been an exercise in surrender and uh, and and trust the process and let go because I've just been wanting to pull my hair that's grown back out. You know, it's (laughs) just been so 
um, really awful. I would never do it again. It's the worst thing I've ever, not the worst right. thing I've ever done because I don't regret it. But you right. know, I didn't expect, expect my expect my husband to pass away, and right. I, I really didn't envision living on the top of a mountain by myself. But I've since, you know, fallen in love with this this amazing amazing guy. Yes. So I'm and I not also- going to be alone. I also know a, li- a little enough about you to know that you have such a gorgeous, uh, which you deserve and which you put out as much as you get back, superb group of friends around you and support system um, that, yeah, that it's like, I get it. I, I too, right? Your friends are your yeah. family, but really it I takes on- I have chosen a- my family, yeah. I, I'm not That's close it. to my immediate family. And I, you know, like I'm estranged from members of my family, but mm-hmm. I have- incredible like you know mandy we share mandy together yes mandy mandy's one of my oldest friends she's been like my best covid buddy i talked to her six times a day you know <laughs> and uh yes she's 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 amazing and it's so it's so fun like to be where we are i mean mindy i think you're around my age i'm 52 and mandy's the same 54 you young whippersnapper <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's so interesting when you have people that have known you and been your witness through i mean i've had transformation after transformation yes you know up and down and mostly up more up than than down but um it's 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 a beautiful thing to share this life experience with someone yes. you know along the way it's really but i also awesome. think you know it, point being uh, what we talk about and who we talk about, which are fellow creatives. Um, Mm -hmm. That is the life of a creative. It is, um, it is a journey. And we know that from the very beginning that things aren't going to be easy and there's an abundance of riches. And then there's this like, hello, 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 hello uh, feeling. And um, you have to create some sense of something around you or you Mm -hmm. will be lost. It will eat you up. Absolutely. And you've kind of been like a real I don't know. You're a card carrying member, man, of that. Just mm. so willing to say yes and jump into the next thing. Um, totally. I'm, I, I love yeah, that I, about you. Thank you. I have been someone that like, I mean, it's not like premeditated. It's just how right. I am, you know, and I am like, I jump, I jump feet first and with love, you know, I mean, it's like, I am in this new, beautiful relationship. And it's like, I never thought after losing Christian to mental yeah. illness and death by suicide, I never thought I would be on the other side of it and be open to loving because my grief, that period of time, that was so, I, I didn't think I could climb out of it because right. the, the, the level of grief is equal to the amount of love. And, and I love big and yes. um, to see myself now, like to look back, except the time I never thought I'd walk this beach that I'm looking at right now. And I just mm-hmm. would cry looking at the sun, trying to be grateful, trying to like find the, you know, the lesson or whatever. I never thought I'd be in this place where I am now. And so, yeah, it is a journey. But, and um, I, 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 I'm just so grateful to live, to be able to live this life of mine. Well, And not, you know? not to wish this upon you or anyone else, truth be told, but you having the generous spirit that you have and have always had, um, it's so wonderful that you've been able able to share your in your grieving process so mm. much. We talk about this a lot where we grieve all the time as human beings and as creatives, yeah. we tend to wear it. Yeah. And you've been so glorious and gorgeous about sharing that. And I think allowing millions of people mm. who love you and trust you yeah. um, to kind of come Thank along. You. Right. Because well, again, it's, it's the only way I know how to be. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm yeah. 52 and I've always worn everything on my sleeve. Yeah. I've been an open book. I used to have that show where I talked about myself, my family, yep. my life, because I felt like it was only, it had to be reciprocated. You know, here I am asking people to share their innermost secrets to me and to my audience. I feel like it's not a responsibility, but I just feel like this is the way I've always been. I've always mm-hmm. been you know, like it or not, like I'm, yeah. I'm an open book. And so I do believe, you know, in, in, it was cathartic for me to share my journey. I mean, I went on that show, the mask singer, that, that silly show I was on the first season and I, you know, I found it to be so cathartic and people were so connect, felt such a connection well, to me talking about and my very courageous. I mean, you mm-hmm. want to talk about vulnerability and it's right. I mean, bravo, I mean, I sister, know bra- It's usually the way it works. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting myself into. I didn't know what that show was. And my friend yeah. Katz was the producer on it. And she's like, trust me, this is going to be the biggest hit ever. And I was like, I don't get it, but okay. <laughs> and I just trusted her. And it was, you know, it was, it, again, it was like a silly thing, but it was really great for me to be able to share about what I was going through and to feel that love and, and appreciation and, and, and camaraderie from my audience as well. Mm-hmm. You know, mental illness is just, everyone is impacted, particularly during COVID. We are all either having it ourselves, whether it's depression or anxiety. I mean, like, you know, we're all suffering. 
And so, yeah, we all need to, you know, break the stigma and talk about it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what inspires you right now? What are you inspired by besides being in love, which I'm so thrilled which about? I have to say, I mean, I was not feeling very inspired even two or three months ago. Like, honestly, mm-hmm. I was really struggling and I, you know, I was drinking at night. Like I was just behaving in way like numbing, self-medicating a yeah. little bit. I I shifted the election obviously helped my mood in a big way. Um, and then, and then on top of it, my house, like coming to fruition yes. and all of that and me like, you know, getting that excited about that. And then, and then this man, this amazing man, he's, he's amazing <laughs> you guys. And I deserve him. Yeah. You know, you bet. I, 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 you bet. I we, um, we put out, we manifest what we're, you know, what we want to attract, what we think we can attract or whatever. And it's like, I have just found someone without even trying during COVID. I mean, it's just one of those weird things, but um, I'm really inspired about our future. You know, I'm really, I have a new film that I've been working on for six years with my producing partner, Abby Epstein. Is this, okay. The business of birth control. And so I'm inspired to get this, this, this work out into the world to educate young women about, their options when it comes to their Okay, I love that you and Abby have kind of started this journey together as filmmakers, first talking Mm -hmm. about birthing options and then going into like medicinal weed and then coming around to birth control. You bravo, you two, for Pete's sake. Yeah, I'm really proud of this work. I love, I love this work. It's really, you know, it doesn't pay you like a talk show at all. (laughs) It really is like you get karma points, you know, and it's really the business of being born will go down as the most important work for me personally in my lifetime. It was, you know, my story. It was, it was my money. It was my idea, the whole thing. And it took four years to make it and to see it live on in this amazing, like evergreen. I mean, everyone is impacted by that film to this day. My new one with about, about birth control, the truth about birth control, same kind of, you know, it's about informed choice. It's about education. Mm -hmm. It's mind blowing the information that we share it really oh, is good like, yeah so i'm super excited about that so what's the status of that what are you gonna are you gonna release that on a platform or take it to the festival circuit like you that's, did with the other that's yes we're, we're definitely applying to festivals i think the next one tribeca we are yeah. hopeful to be in tribeca which was our first film the business being born came, uh, premiered at tribeca as well so oh, i thought it was south um, by southwest ricky no we the people was south uh, south by Got so it. that was that was the film in between, and that was the okay. one that sort of out of our wheelhouse. And that it wasn't my medicine, and cannabis wasn't really my issue. It was my husband's right. issue. So um, that we kind of stumbled upon, and we, we again, I'm super proud of that film. It is my husband's yeah. legacy, and um, so yeah. So we're going to do the festival circuit, but we also are going to put it out this next year, 2021. Um, oh, everyone will be able to see it. We just don't know with the, with the way things work now with distribution. It's like I don't know where it's going to end up, but it'll end up somewhere. Yeah. 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 And uh, I guess what I want to talk to you about also is that uh, I really kind of, uh, again, um, look to you sometimes the way that you so seemingly effortlessly, I know you just say yes, but step back into acting um, because that is kind of like you, you came to L.A. to do that. No, I mean, I did. I did. <laughs> and I, I don't love it. <laughs> like, and I don't, you don't, think I'm do that. you don't love it anymore or did you never really love it? Oh, I loved it. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. That's I what I thought. Okay. On a set. Oh my God. And having a crush on the crew member. And the, the, oh yeah. I mean, I love that lifestyle before I had children, you know, one, and then I did the talk show for so long and that lifestyle right. was even nicer <laughs> having a real like <laughs> set schedule. I'd oh my gosh. Yeah. 30, I'd be done by five. I mean, it was just like a dream job. And I'm also glad I don't do that anymore, you know, but acting, I mean, if it's like a situation where I, it's a role that I'm super passionate about or it's a director that I really want to work with. And yes, I would totally be open to it. I am not currently like out there exploring acting opportunities. No, I prefer producing. I prefer being myself. Like I think I'm better at being me than I am (laughs) pretending to be someone I'm not. But, um, but I've also been to reinventing myself. So like, I haven't acted in a really long time. I'm open, you know, now that I'm like embracing my like gray hair and, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's like, it works. I, I've had a, yeah, I've had a real transformation this year. I've shaved my head. It's almost exactly a year ago. New Year's Eve day will be a year that I freaking took the buzzer and did it. And, um, it was, you know, one of those experiences I, uh, yeah, it was very personal. I put it out there, you know, yes, and you so I don't know. So I feel like I've, sh- I've changed a lot since that experience. And I don't know how it's going to manifest into like another, the next job, but I get off on reinventing myself and proving myself in different ways. 
I love yeah. it. Yeah. What do you, so uh, again, uh, outside of your boyfriend, what are you obsessed about right now? Is it this film? Have you, are you like all in or what do you spend your uh, time thinking about? God, I mean, my house has been kind of like yeah. annoyingly <laughs> the obsession. Uh, yeah, it's so sure. annoying. I am the worst when it comes, like Christian, my partner was supposed to be the one doing all the design. That was his thing. I was going to yeah. pay for it. And I was going to like, you know, and he was going to do all the picking of the stuff. I, it makes me cringe at choosing the nickel or the polished chrome or the <laughs> this or the that, or where do you want the toilet paper holder? Where do you, what side, how high? I literally can't, I can't. Um, so that is <laughs> taking up a lot of my time. Yeah. Um, this relationship, um, I've been doing some political stuff, very little that, you know, I'm trying to do my part in, in getting the word yeah. out. Um, um what else i don't know see i mean it really has been like a survival mode for like many months many mm -hmm. months i would describe it as like me being in a funk in my sweatpants watching msnbc yeah constantly waiting for the break you know and yes then we, of course yeah, so i i don't know i feel like i wasn't very inspired for a really long time and i'm just starting to get my mojo back you know i think next mm -hmm. year is going to be amazing i really do i'm very very hopeful that I am that too. The economy is going to turn around. That uh, that the suffering will be less. That you know, the, whatever. I I just I I'm I'm hopeful, and I wasn't feeling hopeful a few months ago. And I'm like an eternal optimist, you know. Well, did same ditto, but uh, but at some point also like reality hits, you know. And I think at yeah. some point even us terminal, you know, optimists have to like look around us and see what's going on in the world. And yeah, it's, I was struggling. It's hard. I mean, I hated that. I hated seeing that in me, you know, it was it because it's not me. You know, I yeah. never dealt with depression. I lived with someone who was depressed, but I never really knew what it was like to to not be able to get out of bed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And now does, I do. Does where you grew up or how you grew up um, filter through your aesthetic on like how you make these films or how you tell stories? Does that have anything to do with it? Or, or does, is that I mean, like a whole nother... Life. It feels like a different life. It does feel like a different life because I was never someone that would consider myself to be questioning the status quo. Like I was not someone that was really political when I was young. Mm -hmm. Even my show, which is so funny, like, you know, obviously I'm pro-choice, but I wasn't, I was kind of wishy-washy with my opinion about things. Like I could be mm -hmm. easily swayed. I was gullible and I was easily swayed by someone's argument, you know? Oh, and I think I've become more, I think I've become, you know, the older you get, the more of a sense of self that you have. Like I definitely yes. know yeah. myself and like myself more than I ever have. And I think that comes with age and life experience. I'm not sure I answered your question. Did I answer your question? Yeah. It's not even yeah. about that. It's really, you know, I try and just like, you know, just get people's opinions and thoughts up and out. Mm -hmm. And I'm just and, you curious know, because yeah. yeah, no, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but like when he's making these movies, you know, it's like uh, that making the business of being born stemmed from my my witnessing 9-11. I was, you know, living downtown um, in the West Village and saw the plane literally fly into the building. And that shifted my my entire like intention of, of what I want to do in this business. Like I really looked at my mm -hmm. show after that on that day and thought, you know, like, okay, this is my legacy. Like mostly people right. screaming at each other, you know, mostly it was about nonsense, you know? Yes. And I thought to myself, if I live through this day, I'm going to do something. I mean, I want my, my, my name or my mark to be something that's really, that matters to me. That was important right. to me. And so, yeah, that's where I soul searched about what I cared about. And I was so impacted by my birth experience with midwives that I wanted to share that yes. in some way. So yeah, that really, yeah. it really feeds my soul to do work now that not necessarily educates. Yes. But like is thought provoking is mm -hmm. meaningful, you know? Yes. Well, and I remember so, when that when when the film came out, no one even talked about midwifery in so long or doulas. I mean, it, you were the first and same. I, I have to say, people forget when we the people came out. I mean, it was so in front of the conversations we just take for granted now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm really proud of that because we were talking about my, my even my husband back then. I mean, he was looking into ketamine therapy for himself wow. and his issues, but this is 2013, you I know, mean, which when it was so taboo and now it's like mainstream, it's socially accepted. It's, it's scientifically proven, you know, it's like all these yeah. things. So it's like, he was ahead of his time. And yeah, with cannabis, we started that film in 2012. And that Amazing. was like, I, it was crazy. And like, no one even knew what CBD was then, you know? Right. And, um, yeah, it's like, that's something Abby, my partner and I say, it's like, we were able to put our finger on the zeitgeist of what people are going to be 
And not Thank just once. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you Thank two are you. a very quite dynamic duo. I'm really, really excited for you to see the new one. The new one is oh, just. I can't wait. It's just important. You know, it's like we women. And why? Where to, did this where did this one stem from? Why did you two say well, this? this that? Um, Holly Griggs Fall is a writer and she wrote this book called Sweetening the Pill. And so okay. it really takes a look at the hard look at birth control and, and hormonal birth control and what it does to women. And so the, the, the film is loosely based on this book. OK. And um, it, it, it's the same kind of, you know, uh, wheelhouse is like the business of being born where it's like questioning the system. It's really not telling women what to do. It's right. really giving them that information in a mainstream way. And so, you know, yeah, you know, it, it's it's been an amazing tool for women from the 60s on to have autonomy when it comes to their bodies and, and freedom, their yeah. health and choice. And. It, right. There's been takeaway. There's been cons that we we don't consider because we don't have that time with our care provider to understand the pros and cons that it changes your personality. Well, it and changes- they didn't know when it start. I mean, they didn't know there were no test studies decades right. out yeah. right. what it would do. So it's, right. It's, it's really uh, it's just important. Like it's just, you know, and I don't have daughters and I'm about to go through perimenopause. I haven't started it yet, or at least I still get my period every <laughs> regularly. Um, maybe that's too much information for you, Christian, but, um, um, he's been sisters. my friend for 35 years. You think okay. that's too much information? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh, I just 25. Think, you know, sorry. I aged you. You can't do damage by sharing information. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's, it's just, it can only help. And, you know, we need to be able to make informed choices when it comes to our bodies, yeah. um, particularly now, you know? And yeah. so we're not, we're not scaring women off the pill. The, 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 the goal is not to do right. that. It's to, it's, we want more options. You right. know, we want more options for, for people and we want men to maybe have <laughs> an option, you know? Yes. So, yeah. So, um, but also yeah. internationally, I think this, it'll be so interesting to see how other countries respond to mm-hmm. a film like this. Absolutely. Uh, in a topic like this, 100%. I'm excited. Yeah. I can't wait for it. Yeah, it'll be controversial. And I think it'll get a lot of, you know, backlash, good and bad, just like the business of being born did. I mean, yeah, it, it, quite frankly, that was actually, you know, it was really shocking to like screen that at my hospital where I delivered my first son in New York, and they screamed at us. I mean, they were deeply, Amazing. deeply offended by what we were showing, but we were really showing what was going on. So yes, it, it's um, not so fa- It's so fascinating to me. Yeah. That it, yeah. I mean, you mean to start a conversation, but that you really see people's true colors. It's fascinating when you see when you see the reaction of like, you know, ACOG, the American College of Obstetrics mm-hmm. and Gynecologists, they came after me. You know, we knew we were onto something. And I feel like it's the same way with this birth control issue. But again, I'm coming from a place of informed choice. Right. I, I want women to have access to all the options and then some and and to, to really know what they're taking and what it does, what it can do to them, you know? Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I think I feel like my side of the street is clean, even though I know it's stir and it's, <laughs> you know, poking a tiger in some way. You know what? Pharma, you You're know? a storyteller. I mean, really, it, I'm a it, truth yeah. seeker. I really yeah. am. And yeah. I'm not someone that's like highly educated or, you know, like I don't have any degrees, but I'm curious and I'm I'm like the every woman. I still am. You know, it's like people grew up with me. They feel comfortable with me. They relate to me. And I'm asking the questions that I think are are worthy of asking. You know, yeah, Yeah. bravo. (laughs) It's so great to see your face. Ricky, it's so thank nice you. to see you. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for saying yes. It just Mondays <laughs> with Mindy would not be complete if we didn't get your tush in that seat. You are uh, in light. front of us. You are a oh, light. I really I look so forward to seeing you and um hugging welcoming you thing. into yes and welcoming you into your new home that is so well thank deserved. You. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. so much. Nice yeah. talking to you guys. Thank you, you so too. much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. The fabulous Ricky Lake. Ah. Uh, Delicious. Mm. <laughs> Yay. This episode of Mondays with Mindy is brought to you by The Cocktail Party. Love Mary. Tired of cooking? Love fancy hors d'oeuvres, but don't have any idea how to prepare them? Look no further. The Cocktail Party, Love Mary, is here. For 15 years, New York caterer to the stars, and our pal Mary Giuliani has served her delicious, whimsical hors d'oeuvres to the best names in art, fashion, and entertainment. Now she's putting them all into adorable little boxes and sending them from her heart to your home. Six dozen of her greatest hits delivered frozen, including the yummiest nibbles like mac and cheese cupcakes, pastrami on rye tarts, and her everything pig in a pie. Total game changer for anyone who loves pigs in a blanket. As Mary says, all you have to do is turn on the oven, pour yourself a drink, and enjoy more time with your guests. She'll do the rest. 
go to MaryGiuliani.com or MondaysWithMindy.com for more information and to order yours today.